let's talk a little bit about why you're here and what you're actually struggling with. Most students find me and they find the stuff that I'm doing because they have a feeling that their studying isn't working for them anymore. And their solutions, their approaches that have worked for them in the past are no longer working and they're not sure why. And I think this is really important to, to understand because it's not as though you don't know how to study. It's not as though you've never done this before. And I think that's probably you know, one of the more frustrating components is that this has always been okay. This has always worked for me in the past. So by the time students come to me, they're at a point where they're saying, Yvonne, this has worked for me in the past. I've been able to do this before. I've actually done quite well you know, in, in, in my studies. I've been studying for a long time. Something's changed. Something's gone wrong. And I don't know what it is. So here are some stuff that I, that I, that I generally find. One, you're studying, you're studying isn't quite working. You're not getting the results that you used to get. The, the input and output are not the same. You used to be able to put in X amount of hours and those hours would result in higher marks. So that doesn't seem to be working anymore. You can spend hours on something and you still don't know what's going on. That's a new experience for a lot of people and that's incredibly frustrating. It makes you question your intelligence um, and whether or not you've been fooling yourself about whether or not you're smart enough to do this. Because you're not quite sure of what's gone wrong, it's natural to ask yourself whether or not the problem isn't just you've reached a level in your studies where the, you know, your smartness just can't go any further. Like I was smart enough to do stuff up to you know, the last level, up to this level, but I can't go any further and it's because I'm not smart enough to do it. It is very hard not to have that self-doubt. Maybe it's because um, I'm actually not meant to do this, not because I've actively decided that this is not a career path that I want, but because, because my studying isn't working out the same and because I'm not passing, that might be a sign that I should change. So this is very different to sitting back and thinking, I actually don't want this career anymore. This is like feeling as though the career is saying to you, you should stay away. <laughs> <coughs> you know, this isn't for you, and you're going, well, you know, should I be leaving? So there's, there's a lot of self-doubt, and there's a lot of questions around, around that. The way we address this, generally, is to work harder. So the assumption is that the next level of studies is going to be harder, more detailed, more complex, higher level of volume, and so we need to work harder and put in more hours. So the first response we have when this starts you know, when this starts going wrong, when your study starts going wrong, is I'm just going to work harder. I need more hours. I need more stuff. But we get to a point where that still isn't working. I'm putting in more hours, potentially more hours than I've ever put in, and it's still not working. I'm still not getting results for this. Very confusing. Something's broken. Um, I've seen in, in a lot of cases, students start collecting information then. They find more lecturers, they find more content, more tutorials, they sign up for more courses because their idea is that perhaps I don't have enough knowledge or perhaps my tutor or my lecturer or my content is not good enough or is not enough for me or it's not right for me. And so I, can't, I call it scavenging, <laughs> where students kind of go on a bit of a scavenger hunt for as much, you know, as many resources as possible because if I get five different types, versions of the same topic, maybe one of them will make sense to me. So there's a bit of a scavenger hunt. There's a bit of a scavenger hunt in terms of, in terms of that, because maybe that's the problem. In reality, what's really going on is this. At some point in your studies, and this will come into play in different levels, in different exams, depending on what qualification you're doing. But as you're working towards a professional qualification, at some point, the assessments and the expectations of your skills change. Now, this is very different to the idea that things are just harder. Our expectation when we go into the next level of studying is that it's going to be harder, right? And for us, 
Harder means tougher calculations, more complex information, more complicated work, higher volumes of work, but along the same lines that we've always done before. So we're still playing the same game, right? We're still doing the same thing, but it's, it's harder now. It's a little like saying, I'm a sprint athlete and the next level that I'm gonna be working at is a longer sprint against uh, more talented com uh, competitors. So I'm gonna to have to run faster and you know, I'm gonna to have to work on the same types of skills. And I think that's, that's really important to understand is that you're trying to perfect the same types of skills that you've always done in the past. And in your accounting studies, predominantly this is uh, formula-based thinking, uh, you know, details, memory, theory, your, you know, your memory retention around that, how to use that format-driven. Uh, so there's, there's certain types of skills that you focus on in accounting. These are types of skills that you learn you know, fairly early on in your studies, and you keep using them, and you kind of up your level. You, know, you upgrade the level of how you use that. So fine. So you're a sprint athlete, and your competitors are just getting, you know, getting smart. They're getting tougher. They're getting faster, and you know, you're going to have to sprint a little longer. Fine. In reality, what happens is that the game itself changes. So now you're no longer a sprint athlete, you're now a marathon runner. But it's, it's as though no one really told you that this is what was happening. So you're still practicing and you're still training for sprinting, while in reality, you should be asking what you need in order to win the marathon, in order to be able to run the marathon. While both of these are still running, there are a bunch of comparisons or there are a bunch of characteristics about these two that are totally different and you need to think about how much that's going to impact your success right so in you know in in sprinting uh you know speed is crucial and getting out the starting block is crucial whereas in in in, in, in a marathon your endurance is more crucial these are skill shifts right these are two completely different things it's a massive oversimplification to say, well, it's just running. No, 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 it's, it's not. Now you've got to be thinking about the conditions of the road. You've got to be thinking about your endurance. You've got to potentially even be thinking about oxygen levels if you're running at, at high altitudes. One would imagine that I'm a marathon runner. I'm <laughs> really not. Okay. But I want that analogy in your head of completely different outcomes. When we get to a certain level in our studies, our outcomes of the exams change. And the reality or the, the, the challenge here is that nobody tells us. When you sign up for the next level of studies, our assumption is that it's going to be harder, but we don't know what that looks like for us. So even if our lecturers or even if people say to us, okay, you know, in this year, you're going to have to, uh, you know, give more discussions or recommendations around this than, than you have in the past, you're going, okay, fine. Let, you know, let's, let's get on with it. Let's focus on the knowledge. You're not aware of how this impacts your... You're not aware of how this actually is going to impact your studying and the challenges that this is going to take. What I find happening practically is that students have a study approach. I, you know, I go to class. I go through my content. Uh, you know, I have the topic. I'll go through the work. I go through the material, I go through the technical stuff, I make summaries, I highlight, whatever the case is, memorize stuff if I need to. Then I take a look at a, at a question and how it looks and what I'm supposed to do with it. And I do a couple of questions and I, I increase the levels of the questions as I go through them. And by the time I get to, you know, having done a couple of questions, four or five questions, I have a feel for what the answer is supposed to be. So I can recognize the answer because I'm now comfortable with what the questions look like. And that's my approach to studying. So as long as I'm working through questions that look the same as the last question I've done, by the time I've done a bunch of them, I know what the answer is supposed to be. I recognize the answer, I recognize the question. Then we get to a level of our studying and we're still studying the same way. We're still going through the content, we're making summaries, we're looking at the more basic questions and we slowly increase the level of our question. And then we look at an exam level question or we get into the exam. And when we see the question, 
nothing makes sense anymore. I don't, these are the types of things that I hear from my students. I don't know where to start. I don't actually know what they want from me. This seems a little unfair. We've never seen questions like this before. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I don't even know what knowledge to use. This doesn't even seem like the same language. These are some things that I, that I get from students that's causing them frustrations. I don't understand why I've worked through the knowledge and I've worked through you know, the, these questions and now I'm getting to the exam and I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Even more frustrating is that often we find that when we look at the solution for those questions, that is familiar. When we look at the components of the solution, we go, but I know that, but I know that, and I actually know that. So why then am I looking at stuff that I know, but I wasn't able to do it? That doesn't make any sense. That does, that's not logical for us. Okay. So I find students saying things like, you know, if that was all, why didn't they just tell me that's what they wanted? Why did they have to phrase it this way? Why didn't, why weren't they just clear? Why didn't they just say, I wanted you to do that? Why, why can't I get there? And even though I'm doing a bunch of questions, it's not building that same sense of familiarity anymore. When I look at the next question, I still don't know what's going on. I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm doing a bunch of questions, but I'm not getting to that same point of comfort that I used to have of, well, I've done you know, four questions for the topic now, and now I'm comfortable that I understand what they want from me, and I'm comfortable that I know what I'm supposed to be doing here. This is what's going wrong. Um, this, is, this is the stuff that most of my students are experiencing by the time they come find me, and the stuff, their solutions to this problem have not worked. They're studying harder, they're putting in more hours, they're collecting more knowledge, you know, more tutorials, more information, uh, getting more lectures, and they're still struggling 